Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Chop Talk. I am your host, Andre C. Not joining me this week is Melba, but joining me, uh, old friend of mine from the local independent professional wrestling. I've known that I met you, I met this man back in like 2009, 2010, somewhere. Uh, welcoming to the show, Kamikaze. Oh, thank you for having me, buddy. Sorry, I think there's a bit of a lag there, but thank you so much for having no me and taking your time and uh, giving me the opportunity here. Heck yes, sir. I, I've been wanting to talk to you for a while. I uh, recently heard you talking with a uh, former PWA guy, backstage guy, Mike McGuire, and that gave me the inspiration to say, hey, I wanna, maybe I want to talk about this, this man's career a little bit. Oh, well, I think I'm thinking about me think, and putting in the time. Thank you so much, man. Yeah. So let's get into it. Let's just let's get, let's dive right into it. Let's talk about you. Uh, let's go back to the beginning, of the early days. What got you into professional wrestling? Like, like what is like your your fandom? Not it didn't even get you into ac actual wrestling, but when did you start becoming a fan of professional wrestling? Man, I'm my first memories was uh, Hulk Hogan for sure. Uh, my dad had a VHS tape of WrestleMania three, and seeing Hogan and Andre. But the one that made me just bounce off the walls and just with excitement and just didn't know how, when it was going to end or, or how it was going to Macho Man and Ricky Steamboat watching that mm. on VHS. I remember just jumping out of my chair. I was like just going crazy for that. Uh, that's some of my earliest memories. I remember seeing G Snake Roberts and Earthquake when uh, Earthquake squished the snake in the bag. That was really traumatizing and just stood out to me. Uh, those are some early, early memories for sure. Uh, I fell out of it for a while. And then the Attitude Era in 1998 is when things kicked up. I have to credit my father, Papa Kazi. He's the one that really got me into professional wrestling. He was a big, big fan. And I just had this crazy idea that, hey, I can do this. So here we are. Yeah. Again, again I think a lot of people, like I know myself included, I've just randomly watching through my and my dad was had wrestling on i'm pretty sure it's where it started for me so right. it, it's just those weird things that the in this world that you find and I, I i i got into it very late later into the attitude era so i don't have those same memories you do but i got into it late but um so you 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 you're inspired by wrestling you're, you're been what you're obviously watching it for years getting back into it in in the most popular time of professional wrestling and oh man you you got your chance to actually become a professional. I said, what, in like, oh, four, I want to say, roughly? 2004, yes, sir. Yeah. You did a little bit of research. <laughs> well, appreciate it. So, so where where did you get started? Like, where, like, because I know back then, I know there's, I know the odd schools here and there. Where did you go to just get into professional wrestling? So, first of all, I took matters into my own hands. At about 12 years old in 1998, that's when I decided this is what I want to do. One of my best friends, Matt Leismeister, who actually owns a beard oil company called Guillotine Beard Oil Medicine Hat. If you got the beards, check them out. Um, he wanted to be a pro wrestler. That's what he told me in grade seven in our homeroom class. And I thought I sat there in my chair and I was like, you know what? I, I want to do that too thing and just kind of followed suit with him and we took matters in our own hands. We were backyard wrestlers from age 12 to 17, from 1999 to 2004. And wow. we took it seriously, man. We studied tapes. We put things in slow motion, see how to execute and perform these things. And we had training sessions. My dad built a ring out of our trampoline. We called it the trample ring. Uh, <laughs> and I had my own promotion when I was from 12 to 17. It was called CMF Wrestling, Bull Wrestling which I carried on the moniker and the name in my professional career. Um, I remember the first time inquiring about wrestling school when I was about 15, Stampede Wrestling. Uh, the Hart brothers had a camp going on, and I contacted Bruce. We met him at a show, actually, when they came to Brooks or Medicine Hat. And he wanted American money, and it was, like, super expensive. And my dad was just kind of, like, smelling bullshit a little bit. And so we had to wait. <laughs> We had to wait, but that was my first time inquiring and trying. I actually sent two VHS tapes to the Hart brothers of like a backyard CMF wrestling match and like little eight by 10 we sent to. So I was trying, I was knocking on doors, but nothing happened until I was uh, 17. 
I uh, okay. Monster Pro Wrestling with massive damage is where I broke in actually. I know I know the Up promotion well. I know the promotion well. Spent a lot of years going to them, yes. watching wrestling over there. Right. So I, I can very much appreciate. And again, I I got to be involved. I got to work with them behind the scenes for a little bit uh, with our, my buddy Mike Malawini, yes. getting to do some work with them. So uh, I getting to know that crew. So I know I, I've seen the I've seen the ins and outs a bit of their training si- situation. So like you went in there, started training with Massive, or was who was your uh, train? Like I know you're. It's listed as Chichi Cruz. I know. I know yes, it is Chichi, Chichi Cruz. Yes, Chichi yeah. Cruz is was my first trainer. Uh, he was living with Massive Damage at the time. So I moved to Edmonton. Actually, to, to back it up a bit, I lied about my age. I lied and said I was trained. I took a Greyhound bus 12 hours from Medicine Hat to Edmonton, and I had <laughs> a match on a Camp War show for Monster Pro Wrestling. I did a singles match and then a Battle Royal. And then oh, after geez. that, like I knew I had to get properly trained after that. But that was my first debut. I was 17 years old. I hadn't even graduated high school. I hadn't even got my diploma yet. And then I went to college for a year. I took drama and acting because I was very good at that in uh, high school. And then I decided that's what I want to do. Wrestling's it over acting. I just enjoyed the physicality. So I was a dishwasher. I saved up $500 at a, a Houston pizza washing dishes and I hopped on a Greyhound again and moved up to with massive damage. Chi Chi Cruz was living with them. I was in the right place at the right time, man. Like, and I went from the backyard into the backyard again, like, cause we had an old stampede wrestling ring. It was 20 feet by 20 feet in Massive's backyard. And okay. I trained with Cheech, Cheech, man. Cheech was a legend, a true veteran. And I, I learned all my stuff originally from Chichi Cruz. Nice. Uh, yeah. Again, Chichi Cruz, pretty much uh, kind of a, 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 one of the, the lesser known legends in professional, more like in, in the indie style, side, more of an indie legend than any Canadian like. indies. Yeah, never, never getting his real due. But uh, again, that's a great name to learn from. It, it no, really he did. Is. He worked in, yeah, he worked in Japan. He worked in Europe, Germany. You know, all over Canada. Uh, Trouts with WWE, but yeah, just never panned. Unfortunately, but he was amazing, man. Just the psychology and everything, and why you're doing this, why you're doing that. Like, I learned so much from Cheech. He's amazing. Yeah, again, it, the, with the, with the person like that. So, and then you you would join. I know. Again, I I pull I pull up some old histories of like cage match just to help me get a little bit of information yeah. before going into this. So you worked MPW for a little while. Um, how, what was your experience with with them as your like your first? Like I know you had your indie company, your your backyard company, but like, as your first kind of professional right. company you're working now. with. Yeah, what's like your first professional company? How did that feel working with them um, over time? And were you traveling back and forth from the um, Hat area? No, I moved permanently to Edmonton. I, I did. Before I even turned 19, I was like, uh, I moved away a week before my 19th birthday. I couldn't even stay long enough to celebrate my birthday. I just had to get rocking and rolling. Um, yeah, I, I was in Edmonton from that point. My home base was Edmonton for seven years. And mm-hmm. uh, Monster Pro Wrestling, I stayed with them for three years, I believe. Yeah, about that. Um, it was right place at right time. They scored a TV deal in my rookie year. So we were on Access Television wrestling in 2006 all over Canada. Like you could go on the TV guide and it would say like Monster Pro Wrestling on the thing. And we had a cool little time slot right after ECW on Sci-Fi on Friday nights. So we just caught those wrestling fans. It was a cool time, man. Like graduating high school and then you're on TV already and stuff. It was a cool experience. I no regrets there, man. It was right place, right time. Yeah, a hundred percent. Because again, you you have that opportunity. And again, I remember seeing Monster Pro Wrestling late at night, uh, listed on Access TV, right? and, that, and that old the yes. old scrolling the old scrolling thing. And I'm like, That's what's right. this? And then I found out what Monster Pro Wrestling was, and I watched it, and I'm like, "That's from here." And it wouldn't be for like two more years before I'd ever see. Like, I think I saw a couple indie events that would come through Mournville over the years, but like. Right. Monster Pro was the first re- realization of me going, oh, there's independent wrestling still alive in Canada. Okay. Yeah, man. And it, and it got me to, to into watching the scene. And then you would leave uh, from Monster Pro and you end up going to PWA. 
and and Correct. other promotions yes. throughout. And that's where I ended up seeing you the first time I ever saw you. And I got this old picture on my Facebook from way, way, way back those early days of Facebook of you and me, but you're wearing a Spider-Man mask. And it was it's still one of my favorite <laughs> memories when it pops up. <laughs> Man, I forgot all about that, but I know the picture you're talking about. Because I used to wear a mask for five years, my first five years. And when the show was over, or there's intermission, I used to have like an extra Spider-Man mask. It was an old Halloween yep. costume. And I'd throw that on and just run around and do stuff or grab something or check things out. And no one knew my identity. So it's kind of just like a low-key way. But I remember that now. That's amazing. you got to send me that picture, please. I will. And the old, and I think you actually have on a, a hat that says kamikaze <laughs> on it. That's the only reason. Well, that's I, not working I, at all by secret identity. That, that's Jeez. the only reason I know when, when I look back at the photo, I'm like, oh, that's the picture with Cam from way back. <laughs> Dude, that's old school. I forgot all about that. I used to, I still have that mask. It still sits <laughs> in my gear bag. Yeah. Well, you can't, you can't, every, every now and again, you just look at it and go, ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Think about the old days. <laughs> yeah, man. Amazing. So, like, I remember, I remember the from those early days. Um, you were in a, you were working a lot of tag team wrestling with Eclipse. Yes. Uh, now, Eclipse. no, I, don't, yeah, I don't know if if anybody knows the secret ident, what a secret identity is, and that it's been revealed now. But it is uh, our uh, local independent wrestler, uh, the Omen. <laughs> Right. I, I didn't say it. You did. I'm just, I'm I still going to act did. like I don't know what, who he is, or he's a mysterious well, man that eclipse. They have, they have a lot of similarities between the Omen right. and Eclipse. Let's say that. Let's just say that. They have a yeah, lot of similarities. I, yeah. I've never seen them in the same place at the same time. So true. Very true. <laughs> so how, like yeah, I getting into that. With him. I, w I was, I have the thumb drive you sold me at a show a little while back with all the videos. I was oh. watching through, I was watching through over the last week, just watching old matches, just, just before we talk. And awesome. I, I uh, was watching some of the brothers in flight stuff. And I was like, ah, oh, it brings me back. Cause like I have, again, there's picture. I have pictures on my Facebook from meeting both you when you won the tag team titles in PWA and getting a picture with you guys. And it's just, it's those kind of things that I love. I I I, I miss those days. I kind of miss those days of indie wrestling too. Man, I that was a great PWA was a great locker room. Kurt Srocken was a great promoter and a hilarious gentleman. Lots of never a dull moment around Kurt Srocken. That's for sure, man. Like that whole locker room was great. You know, it's a lot of good memories. Uh, and yeah, man, Eclipse, my tag partner, the Brothers in Flight. Like, what a great human being. I got nothing but good things to say about him. Just a salt of the earth guy. Uh, you have a lot of acquaintances in wrestling, but he is a true, true friend. Eclipse for sure. And yeah, we tore it up. We gelled and we good chemistry. We good tag team. I think you know. Oh, I I very I loved you guys as a tag team. I thought you guys worked so well in there. And again, the two mask guys just it, it, you kind of get that yeah. gives you that good feel, right? In the, in there. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. So, uh, and I know this from years ago, do, looking back at stuff, you actually went and trained a bit with Lance Storm during your time in PWA, right? Yeah, we would uh, dabble in there a uh, couple of sessions in Monster Pro Wrestling. Actually, we'd go on a week weekend and Lance mm -hmm. was kind enough to take his time after all. His, you know, he's training guys all the time, five days a week, but he'd still take his time on the weekends, do some sessions with us. But then I actually enlisted in his school in 2012 and I did a full three month session from start to finish. And I really credit Lance for just like polishing me up and like just really breaking a lot of bad habits I never knew I had. He really polished me up, man. He's a great, fantastic trainer. I would actually, I would actually say like, he's almost better to polish guys up. Like, don't get me wrong. It's good to break in with someone like that, but his curriculum was only three months long. And sometimes that's, that's not enough time for like new brand new guys, you know, to soak all that in in three months. But if you already had some experience prior to, and you go and train with them, like I did, like, holy smokes, like it just, things just clicked and, and uh, I can't credit him enough, man. He was so helpful, official. It was one of the best decisions I could have made. He, he polished me right up. Yeah. I, I, I remember again, one of the time, all, all those years watching PWA, and seeing like just a bunch of, I remember the load of Australian guys that came through that were training, yeah. they were already 
extreme, but they went to work with Lance and you saw them just get so much better in those three months. That's and again, great. Lance is so many people have come out of his school. And again, I, I'm, I'm happy he gave you that ability because I always wondered why did he go back to school? Like, again, I always wondered that. Yeah, well, you know what? what? The thing with pro wrestling, man, is you can never stop learning. Like I'm mm -hmm. just out there all the time. I've done so many seminars and tryouts and just, you know, all the seminars I kept my eyes out for just training with legends and guys that are better than you have been there, done that, made money. That's what you got to do. If you're just stuck in this bubble in Alberta and thinking you're all that and you're not trying to better yourself, like that's the wrong attitude, wrong way to go. Like it's, you got to get out there. You got to travel and you got to look for these seminars and these tryouts and just, you know, expand your horizons. Uh, I've done that my whole life and I've, I'm grateful. I have a, quite a grocery list of people I've got to train with some that are actually deceased and gone now. So I learned a lot from a lot of these legends. I'm very grateful and I'm obligated to on now to the next generation as well. Oh, oh, heck yeah. I can imagine some of the guys in the locker room now with, with you working. Like, you've been around the world now. Like, because you went from PWA. I know I, I watched you for a few years. I got to work with you a little bit in RCW when I was uh, when I was working the ring crew with them back in the in the teen in the teen in the teens years before I got into ring announcing with them. And I, I know you worked there. And like, how, how is it transferring over to RCW from, from working for PWA for 20 years? And I know you worked some RCW in the that time and sure you went yeah just, i'm just looking at more like these are the companies i witnessed you working over the years at least mm -hmm. well the reason i made the jump I, I had pwa for several years and then i made the jump to rcw and then other local independents uh was because unfortunately at the time kurt sorokin wouldn't allow you to work other places unfortunately mm -hmm. he was kind of just like stuck committed to pwa and like there's just so much more opportunities going on like uh the big straw that broke the camel's back was when heart legacy wrestling popped into town and i had an opportunity to work there and it was basically i was just given an ultimatum either pwa or you know go on your own and be a true independent wrestler and i chose to be a true independent wrestler and i i don't regret it pwa was amazing i have nothing but good things to say but i don't think i would have grown as a wrestler if i just stayed there working twice a month for months on end you know what i mean like i had to get out and about and travel and when i left man i worked with harry smith i worked with trent beretta i worked with uh chris masters i worked with uh jack evans teddy hart um el samurai del sol you know just all in one night too yeah to leaving peter like i just it was a no-brainer like i had just to help further my career you know yeah, I, I was going to ask you about Heart Legacy and and, and what an event the eventual uh, the next generation wrestling show that that came out of that. Um, right. How was it working with all of them? Because again, it, you you worked with legends. Like I'm, I'm looking at the match here. Uh, you worked the Lucha Libre match. You had Brian Cage, Flip Kendrick, uh, Pete, Pete Wilson, who was Brian local. Cage, yeah, here. yeah. Um, you had again David Boy Smith Jr. Sammy El Zane, Generico. El Generico. I worked him in his last match. Yeah, and then the like Samurai Del Sol, who would go on uh, to be part of the Lucha Brothers, and now is back on the indie scene now. I turn it. It's like just crazy yeah. names, man. Very <laughs> thankful, very lucky. Yeah, man. Uh, if I would have stuck with PWA, none of that would have happened. So it's yeah. everything happens for a reason. Yeah. And then to answer Again, your question about RCW, oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, no, that's what I was going to lead into. Yeah, go ahead and talk about RCW if you want. Oh, no, with, with RCW, it was just more extra work for the boys and myself. And there was no, you weren't tied down. You could be a true independent wrestler, a true independent contractor. You work here, you can work there. There's going to be no flack for doing this and that. And mm -hmm. it's just good for everybody. Like, I get the idea Kurt had that, you know, he wanted us exclusive to Edmonton. But at the same time, none of us are getting that much once a month, you know, we need pro wrestlers need reps. We need to be out there on the road, working as much as we can, getting as much experience as we can, work with people better than us. Like, and it's just not going to happen working once or twice a month for one company. I'm sorry to say it, but so that was part of the reason. And, you know, RCW, Steven Styles, you know, he welcomed me with open arms and treated me very well. So I can't yeah. complain. Uh, see, okay, Steve let, gave me a shot at, at Doing becoming a ring announcer in this business, I will. I will always 
have a soft spot nice. in my hair for that man for giving me letting me join the ring crew and then letting me become his ring announcer for for a few couple of years there. I was going to say. So in that time nice. working on you traveled a good bit too in there. You got like all the Saskatchewan, Manitoba, traveling with CWE, HIW, traveling with these guys, going around doing a lot of stuff with these companies. And yes, sir. I watched watched the yeah, match man. today from uh, HIW. You versus my least favorite wrestler of all time, Jeff Tyler. It's just I, I can't. But Astro Boy. Uh, I hated on him so much when he ended up joining PWA. I used to hate on him so much. But yeah. <laughs> But no, um, like how was that traveling around? Because like you did a lot. Like you traveled all over Western Canada and 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 to other places. I know you traveled since coming back. But um, how was that? Sure. Just travel amount of travel and time you put in. Like, what's that life like traveling that much, doing that much professional wrestling? Man, I love it. It's what I'm meant to do. It's what I'm built for. Um. The sacrifices come with it. You miss out on a lot of family stuff, you know, having a girlfriend. It's, it's a hard life, man. But, you know, if you just stick to yourself and live the dream, which I was and still am, thankfully. I mean, I love it, man. I love going to different towns and cities. I love meeting all the different people. I love just doing what I love to do on a consistent basis. I think the longest I was on the road for, I think th this is back then. I think I beat my record now, but oh, I was on the road for over a month. It was like a month and two weeks. I was gone from like January into February. I hadn't come home. I was like in central Western Canada, all over the damn place. You know, I hadn't seen my bed in like a month, oh, a month and a half for sure. So yeah, man, putting in the miles, the money in the miles, man. That's what it's all about. So and that's how you get yeah. good. That's how you get better. You like you got to be working consistently. So, a hundred. I, 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 I believe I that. Life. I believe that a hundred percent. Because again, you only get better the more people you face. If you're free. and again, this is no shot at any other any wrestler that ever that, any wrestler that watches. But the more you go, the more you more you evolve. The more you the more different styles, different people you work with. The, the better you're gonna get. It's in any job anywhere. The more places you go and the, be, the more things you do, you get better. Hundred percent. Yeah. So yes, 2014 kind of, you kind of 2014 to 2016, you kind of peter off in professional wrestling. It, it kind of, and then you kind of have your last, the last matches for seven years in 2016. What was, what was it life? Where was life taking you at that point into the fact that you did, you were working pretty much almost full time in professional wrestling at this point. What made your decision to step away? Man, so as just getting my head wrapped around a damn woman, I'm sorry to say. Uh, I I was in a relationship with uh, Amaris Billington, the Dynamite Kid's daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess I warned her, man. Like, I, I was even avoiding her. She, like, she came after me in those early years, like, pursued me. But I just knew I wouldn't be on the road. I'd be on the road a lot. I wouldn't be around. You know, financially, it's a tough life. Like, mm -hmm. but, you know, she, she wanted – she wanted to go at it she wanted it so i ended up falling madly in love with her um and we had a, it was good for a while but then you know everything that i warned her about basically started to come to fruition that i'm not around a lot financially things are tough like i can look after myself but with two people it gets tough on the independent level mm -hmm. and uh yeah man things started to fizzle out and she couldn't handle that kind of life and i don't blame her but I tried mm. to warn her, but it really screwed my head up. Uh, you mm. know, I just, I loved her with all my heart and it just made me feel guilty for being me, for being a professional wrestler. And for a long time, I just, I felt bad. I felt bad for being a wrestler just for, for losing at the time that I thought was the love of my life, another woman. And uh, I gave up on myself in a lot of respects, man. I just screwed my head up for a long time. And I just tried to be normal and live a civilian life. Tried to get her back, didn't work. And I was yeah. lost for a while. But I think it uh was the analogy I was like forged in a fire, like I was being sharpened those seven years. I was being prepared for my big return here. And uh yeah, I did a lot of different things. I was in home care for a while. I looked after a gentleman with MS. Uh I was in home okay. care for three years. I looked after his name was Jerry Berg, and uh that was a blessing. I'm very blessed to have met him and worked with him. And 
next to professional wrestling, I think home care is one of the best things. One of my favorite things, honestly, is just very fulfilling next to professional wrestling. And yeah, unfortunately, I he passed away. Hmm. And I got after that again. is when I was like, okay. He passed away. Huh? It's like, I'm not getting any younger. I still miss this and love this. And I decided to get back on the boat, man, get back on the horse and get back into wrestling. So, yeah, a hundred, I got a hundred percent respect to you for anybody that is in that home care world or is in taking care of any other human. It just, it, it's so, it, I, I, I have in my personal life, I'm watching people take care of somebody and I know how tough it is. And I got a hundred percent respect for that. Um, so you, Life is life puts you back on the path to coming back to professional wrestling. So I, I know you made your way back, but you decided to go across the pond to uh make yes. your way into professional wrestling. What what got in your head to say, why 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 are you going halfway across the world to get back into professional wrestling? What what made you think this is what my path is? Well, back in 2014, I uh got I got over with Frank Chick Cullen. He was back in the Stampede Wrestling days. He's originally from the UK. He worked for World of Sport. And he really enjoyed my work. He actually put me over to William Regal and helped me out with some tryouts with WWE and stuff. But he said he could get me work in the UK. And this is back in 2014. But then my head got all screwed up with the relationship stuff. So it, it never came to fruition. But when I decided that's I want to get back into this cider, I was like, well, let's pick up right where we were supposed to leave off here. Like I was supposed mm. to go to the UK in 2014. Let's do it now. And I, plus I just looked at the scene in Canada and like, there's some new faces of course, but there's still a lot of the same old faces. And I just felt like I needed a change. I needed to work with people I'd never met before people better than me, uh, just a whole new environment. And the UK was it Europe was it. So I got on a plane. I came in cold didn't know virtually anybody. I knew Dick Richards. Oh. That was about it. Dick Richards oh, kind of helped me. I, I haven't yeah, heard man. that name in years. Holy oh, moly. We go, we're pals, man. We're really tight, Dicky and I. Um, oh, I, I, I miss that man. I thought he... Me like, too. When he was over here, when he wrestled here, living here, I thought that man was one of the most entertaining professional wrestlers right? I've ever seen in my life. The, he In ring, he was so good, but like, it's how he could be everybody's favorite good guy or just make you hate him with the drop of a hat. He yes. just had that utter perfect charisma in professional wrestling. I agree hundred percent, man. He's awesome. He, he's the man. Uh, so he helped me get over to the UK. I stayed with him for a bit. And then I lived with a rookie wrestler named Nathan angel. Look him up. He's a top prospect, man. He's wrestling in Germany and the UK right now. Uh, and I lived on a farm with Nathan angel and, we didn't have a lot of downtime, but when we did, we just worked on the farm, herded sheep. It was an adventure, but man, I was wrestling eight to nine matches a week. Uh, I banged out 70 matches. I stayed there for seven months. So I did 70 matches in seven months. Uh, it was awesome. Wow. It was exactly what it's what I needed confidence back, get my traction back. And I came in cold. And by the time I left, like I got myself over and I got over with all the people and the promotions and, I still get messages when you coming back, when you coming back. And I most definitely will be making a return eventually here. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Cause like, especially going over there doing that in seven months, running 70 matches. I know this year you, I, I was just, just, just off the cage match counter alone. You've already had 85 this year, but do 70 in seven months. That's a, a pretty damn, especially going in cold as cold. You're saying you hadn't wrestled in seven years at that point. Yeah. That, yeah. that, that's, to get back in and go that hard into it like before we move back to you coming home how like went over there like how did it feel getting back in the ring for the first time in seven years like like getting in there training feeling feeling those bumps coming out coming out coming again how'd that feel for you well, after so long it was like riding a bike i it's some things you just forget and during my time hey, those seven years it's not like like i was scared and felt bad to go to shows and be a wrestler, but I was still studying and watching old tapes and DVDs all this time. So that seven years, I was still learning and I was still soaking things in. And so mentally I was definitely in tune 
And when I got there, like it was like riding a bike in a lot of respects. But I remember they don't have a lot of salt in their food. And I had big troubles my first month cramping up so bad. Like my body was just cramping up doing all the training sessions and stuff like that. And then I was talking to Rick Victor, APOC from PWA. Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, dude, one of the issues might be they don't have to put salt in their food like they do in North America. So like you might need a little extra electrolytes and salt in your diet so you don't cramp up as bad. And I think he was right. That was a big thing. But I was pretty beat up from going seven years, not doing anything. And then just wrestling again, that first month was pretty rough on the body. I remember I got off a plane when I first got there and I went straight to play fight London, a wrestling school in London. I literally like flew eight to 10 hours and I got right on, right on the bus and then went to training like immediately. So like my body was just cramped up from sitting in a plane for fucking 10 hours. Excuse my language. And uh, yeah, it, it was, it was hard at first. But like I said, it was like riding a bike and I got back in a groove very, very quickly. Yeah. Again, doing that much. And then, so you, you do your time, you do your seven months over there. What, what gave you the drive to come back to Canada? Like what, like, did you just wanting to come home to see family and, and all that? Or yes. is it just, uh, or just my like- sister, my sister had a child and I missed the birth of little Jordy and I just needed to get home. Like, I think the longest you can stay is six months and I pushed it mm. seven months as a tourist. So I had to get back. I had to get back. So um it was just one of those logistic things where like i needed i was just going to become like an illegal there so i had to return home but yeah. uh i just had uh, goals too like was, i want to put in a solid year here in canada and go hard and reclaim my spot basically as one of the best here in the country and i'm in the process of doing that right now i feel to correct you with cage match uh i'm starting to update more matches but in just a year and two months, I've had almost 200 matches already. So cage oh, wow. match isn't quite accurate. I'm uh, one of the I busiest did, yeah, guys I, in Canada. Yeah, I, I was looking at it. I'm like, I'm like, I'm I in my head, I'm thinking, I, I just in this year alone, it was 85. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's had more than that, just counting all yeah. the matches from all the CWE tours and all the other indie shows yeah. that you've been doing and I that I know you've been doing. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he's above that number. I'm just just going but again, it's only gets updated by who enters it, right? Like that's all it, it is. Yeah, it is. for sure. For it's sure. just my guy. Well, I'm close to 200. I'm close to 200 in just over a year. Wow, that, that again, that's insane. Cause like if you think about it, and you come back and you, I like you get in with CWE, who I think are doing some of the most unique, one of the most unique companies in professional wrestling, and the fact that they still do tours outside of maybe the camp, the the, the camps in Germany. There's very little right. that feels that it, that's even close to this. Like as I know, they it's tour true. around for weeks on end, just doing yeah. professional wrestling all across Canada. It's true, man. I did. Uh, I've been doing them. St- since I came back, uh, we did the Savio Vega tour. It was 17 days, and we were working like twice a night. I banged out over 30 matches on that tour in 17 days. Wow. Like It was intense. Yeah, man, but it's living the life, man. Like That's the one thing this new generation is missing is like these reps, and I highly suggest they try and get on a tour if they can. Uh, it's so beneficial. You're not going to get better if you're not working consistently in front of different crowds every night, working people better than you, at different opponents. You know, this is this is how it's done, man. This is professional wrestling 101. You got to be on the road. Yeah, 100. percent Because again, it's only going to make you better. And like I know, I saw I saw you appearing back on on graphics again for CBN. I'm like, oh, he he's back wrestling again. I I hadn't seen you on a graphic in years. And then you pop right. there, pop up on the RCW graphics for Calgary. And I'm like, why isn't he working here? And then finally. <laughs> Uh, earlier er, earlier this year in uh, February, I got to see you come finally come back to Edmonton with CWE, and then you would join you would join it into RCW shows here in Edmonton. Right, now. watch it. I got I got to watch you return here with Chad Daniels. I made me so excited because I remember coming up to you at that show and just being like, "Oh my god, dude, it's been forever!" And I just it was so I nice, remember, to brother. It was so nice to finally see you again at, in professional wrestling because I think that's the biggest thing for me is seeing you return and. All this stuff I've watched you do, I've watched, and again, it, it's a, it's the same person, but a completely different, in a completely different way. Now is what how I feel because you evolved very much as a professional wrestler since 
all those years ago watching you because you were very much you flew around a lot <laughs> when I watched you back right. in the day. I, you still do it, but I find you you're so much more of the mat wrestling. You've got you're so, so much more of the like the grounded based wrestling. I've watched you evolve in your style. Correct. And I mean, I think now, like when I do fly around, it means a lot more. Like there's a mm -hmm. purpose and meaning behind it. Like just the psychology's gotten better. The storytelling's gotten better. I mean, older and wiser too. Uh, but yeah, man, I love mat wrestling. I love technical wrestling. So, and in the UK, man, holy smokes, some of the best technical wrestlers I've had to deal with out there. They are above anything here in North America, truthfully, man. So just working with all of them and just soaking all that in too really helped out a lot uh but yeah man it, that's what it is though when you put in enough time in this you do evolve you got to evolve um you know if i kept working the way i was when i was younger just flying around like i wouldn't last no one does and that's why you see a lot of shorter careers now too and guys getting seriously injured with neck stuff and spinal stuff like you got to smarten up you know you got to there's a time and place to do that but it's not every night it's not every night yeah. Again, and I, I've I've loved watching the difference in you now, and then just doing all these tours. Like, how's it felt like to be? You're you're pretty much working full time as a professional wrestler again. Like, how that is that my job? You? Yes. Like, like now being on the road. Like, I know you were doing all that stuff in England. Now being on the road again, like doing these long tours. Like, I know you did. You've done multiple tours now with CWE over the years. You've worked RC, and when you don't have a tour, you're working RCW. You're working. Uh, is it uh, PPW down in Medicine Hat? You're working. Yeah, they're uh, really uh, good down there, in Lethbridge. You work. You you work for Wild Rose, I know too, for the Wild Rose uh, Sports Association yes. company. So, like, how's it feeling being back in Al Alberta in Canada, kind of your old stomping grounds, but doing this like again full time and making this ev in kind of and we we've had this we've had conversations about it at shows since you've returned. Yeah. But how's it feel being back on the road doing this pretty much full time again? Uh, beautiful. It's my life. This is my job. I don't have anything else. This is how I make my money, with my payoffs and my merchandise. And that's my choice. That's what I want. It's not a hard, it, it, it's not an easy life. It's quite difficult at times, but I love it. I'm doing exactly what I love to do and picking up where I left off after 2014, 2016. You know, I was one of the busiest guys in Canada and I was doing it full time then. And I didn't come here to do this as a hobby and to half-ass it. And I don't think the right mentality is to do it as a hobby. Like what you put your body through, you better make it worth it. You better be making some money and going balls to the wall, trying and going for it. I, I don't think this is the type of profession you do as a hobby. I think you need to go all out with it. So that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm blessed by the grace of God to be doing it again and being one of the most busiest guys. Once again, uh, I, I'm just thankful, man, and I'd take it one day at a time. Uh, I'm living the dream, I'm living the dream. Yeah, again, I can't like when I, you know everybody wants to dream. There's so many of us that dream to be in professional wrestling, I'm, but I'm so glad like someone like you who loves and is passionate about it is doing it and succeeding at it and and making it uh, make do making a career out of it. I'm really happy to see you doing this, and um. Before we get into the end of this and asking about uh, and where you're at now, where you're going, what's coming, uh, I want to ask you: Are you still? Are you? I'm, I'm guessing you're still a fan of professional wrestling. Still, you, you got to be to to still be as passionate as you are. Are you just? What are, what are you watching now? Is it just the WWE or is it AEW? What are you watching now? So I don't really watch too much of the current product. To be completely honest with you. I still just study old school stuff, man. Like from anywhere from the early 2000s and below. And, you know, I like watching old stuff from the 30s and 40s. You can find on YouTube, the 50s, uh, 80s, 90s stuff, Japan, uh, Europe. Man, world of sport from like the 1970s mm. and 80s is some of the best wrestling I've ever seen in my life. Like they're just so good. Uh, but yeah, right now, currently, I was watching some 2002 WWE Raw. Actually, the one where wow. they're in Edmonton with the oh. Eddie Guerrero, Raw Van Dam ladder match where uh, Tommy oh, Dreamer drinks Undertaker's spit. I'm watching that right now, actually. And it's amazing. It's so entertaining. It's so good. Um, wow. I sometimes catch 
SmackDown, because I travel a lot with Cody Mack. We're a tag team, the Gas City Grapplers in uh, Lethbridge. Mm. And uh, I'll watch some current SmackDown WWE product at his house. And it's awesome. I'm enjoying the presentation of things. I like the changes they've made to the product. I think it's a lot more realistic. It's not so hokey. Um, I'm enjoying it. And they're packing the arenas. Business is good. Business Mm. is good right now. So I don't watch much AEW, to be honest with you. I'm a big Jim Cornette guy. So I'll just say that. (laughs) Hey, it's it's not uh, not every wrestling is for every. I, for me, majority of what I watch now is Japanese professional wrestling and the nice, indie scene. Nice, nice. That is like we again on my on this channel here. I cut. Co- we cover New Japan. We cover Stardom, and we cover the new promotion Mari Gold, which was birthed from people that left Stardom. So again, cool. that's what I that's what I watch. Majority. I still watch a little bit of AEW. I watch a little bit of WWE, but it's not not as hardcore that anymore. So I, I understand right. it. It's not, again. Not everything is for everybody, but we all have our love and what 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 inspires us as, as wrestling fans. 100%. I think right now there's a good boom at the moment. I'm lucky to be in the right place at the right time. Like WWE's business is doing excellent. They're making money hand over fist. And it's, it's trickling down into everything else. You can see it with the attendances and the houses that we do. Like we'll run CWE on a Tuesday, Wednesday night. And it's, you know, there's... It's a great house for a Tuesday night. Like wrestling is is kind of hot again, which is refreshing to see. Yeah, I, again, I've I've been to the CWE shows when you guys have come into town, and you guys are you're filling the place up. The crowds are are loving it. Um, just watching you in there, I loved you and Andy Anderson the last time you guys were in Edmonton for CWE. Uh, you two had just it. I I think he is probably the best heel wrestler to ever exist it, it may, at least on the independent wrestling scene because he has such a great ability to just make everybody hate him and i think you are such a good good guy in professional wrestling you get you have so you have that utter ability to get the crowd to just feel for you and get behind you and i think it made just a great a great pairing between the two of you in that match well you hear let me tell you a little it's it's kind of a no-brainer but some promoters can't wrap their brain around it but you get a good hell of a baby face. You get one good hell of a heel. And you get magic. That's what you mm-hmm. get. That combination together, it's magic. And that's what I strive for. Like, I want those dastardly bad guys that are getting heat. Like, I want that, man. Because you put that together and me together, and it turns into magic, man. An emotional yeah. roller coaster. For, for sure, because again, it's just so much when you have those characters. Same, it's the same thing. But you look at like a Danny Duggan. You put him against across against a guy like you. He's so yep. good at playing, getting people to hate him. Uh, AJ Sanchez, same thing. I'm just, I'm look, kind of looking at the stuff from the last tour. I could just imagine being in any of those places and just loving those because so many guys that are just such good heels and you're such a good baby face. It just makes it work so well. Yes, sir. That's the combination, man. It's it's magic. It's it's simple mathematics in pro wrestling, you know, and it works every time. It works every time. Uh, Danny Duggan is like probably I've had some of my best matches against Danny, to be honest. Like he is one hell of a competitor, hell of an adversary, a foe, uh, my nemesis in a lot of respects. Like we just always, it's always a crazy matchup when the two of us get in there together. So, yeah. So we're this is gonna be dropping tomorrow as we record this. It's Monday. We're gonna be dropping this tomorrow on Tuesday. Where are you gonna be over the next little bit? You got any CWE stuff coming? Any more CWE tours coming? Talk about it. Let's 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 tell people where to go find you. All right, awesome, man. So this coming Thursday in Calgary for Real Canadian Wrestling, I'm defending the British Commonwealth Championship against Dalton Rogue. Then we're in Hussar on Friday for Real Canadian Wrestling. And then uh, the following weekend, there's a double shot with uh, Lethbridge and Tabor for Pure Power Wrestling. And then after that, I'm in uh, Calgary and Edmonton once again at the end of the month for Real Canadian Wrestling once again. And then uh, CWE, the next tour will be in November. So there's a little bit of a break there, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, sometimes that's okay and I'll just work more locally, that's all. But yeah, and then also uh, Can-Am Wrestling, there's talks. Hopefully by September, we'll be doing some business there. Same with Wild Rose. Uh, but yeah, no, staying busy. The schedule is filled up. September, October is looking good. So yeah, man. Thankful perfect. for the work. That's perfect. Because again, that's all you want to hear is you. I want to hear 
that there's more and more independent wrestling happening because it just it just means so much more people can discover what a joy going out to your local and i've i've gotten people for old co-workers to come with me to to indie shows that yeah. always look at wrestling and go oh yeah professional wrestling stuff and gee you convince somebody to come to a show i got when i was in montreal like six eight years ago I got my cousin to come out to indie wrestling and he he ended up buying a t-shirt because he enjoyed the tag team so much. Like it's those little, it's those little things that it's so different from watching on TV. But when you go to your local independent wrestling scene, that's why me and Mel have our show chop talk where we report on everything we see because we want to talk about it. We want to report on it because we love it. We love it. We love to hate on some people. We love to love on other people. It, It, but it's it's independent wrestling, and again, it's the lifeblood it, to me of professional wrestling. It is. That's where the future stars of tomorrow are, and that's where the the pulse of pro wrestling is. Essentially, is like that's the lifeblood, as you said, to steal the words out of your mouth. Um, I love that. I love hearing that. That's that's a beautiful thing to me. I mean, the true art behind this is, you know, I mean, like you have like the super fans that are always going to be there. Mm. I don't cater to them. Because they're going to be there anyways. What I try and cater to is your average nine to five people with families, you know, children. Those are the people that are going to expand your business and Mm -hmm. make it grow. And if you can get someone that might be a closet wrestling fan or maybe never even heard of it and you do this correctly and you do it right, you can make a fan out of them. And it's, it's beautiful, man. I I love hearing what you just said to your buddy buying a t-shirt. You know, that's, that's the art. That's the art behind this is just selling tickets, putting asses in seats, you know, and it's done right. It's a beautiful thing. It really is. It's all so enjoyable. So yeah, uh, we can find, I'll be putting links to CWE, to RCW, to all that in the, in the, in the links below, make sure people can find them on, on the Facebooks and every, and their websites and everywhere else. So that they can come out and find you and see you. Cause again, I, I've loved talking to you for these last 45 minutes. Cause again, I, I just, I've known you for a lot of way years, back. met you yeah. way back. And I'm so glad to see you returning. You've returned to wrestling and thank you just in, in doing so well with it too. Thank you, sir. I'm blessed, man. Every day is a blessing. I don't take it for granted. I'm very thankful. I got to put over the good Lord above. I wouldn't be nothing without, you know, my family and the creator himself. I, I'd be nothing without them. So just one day at a time, man. Life is a blessing, and I'm thankful to be back. Thankful to be back. So uh, before we get out of here, where can the fans find you uh, if they want to get in contact with you before they get it out to an indie show? Well, I have an Instagram, a YouTube page, and uh, someone just created a very good person, just created a Facebook fan page for me because I refuse to go back. But uh, Instagram's my main one i'm on there if you message me i will reply back but uh it's all the same kazi cmf for life k-a-z-e c-m-f the number four life kazi cmf for life that's for instagram and facebook you can find me on that yeah if you if you, if you want if you're watching us uh right here it's going along the bottom i'll have it in the description box down below it'll be able to click at it go and check out his youtube page go check get all the, all the videos Go check out all of that, 100%. Um, and then, yes, check out cwecanada.ca for all the information on Thank when you. their next tour is and all the, all the other matches before they even get back to tours. I know they're going to be having stuff in between. So check them out for all the great independent wrestling that I'll be having in Winnipeg and Ontario and everything. And the other company you work for, Real Canadian Wrestling, uh, you can find Kamikaze there with his uh, British Commonwealth Championship. I'm praying you retain that on Thursday. So... <laughs> And then uh, so check them out on Facebook. Uh, you can find me on all the socials at, at that Canada guy or at that Canada dude. Uh, and right here on a YouTube page, you can find me over at Bam Weekly on the Facebook page, and uh, over at Twitch TV slash Our Local Establishment. Also, give a big shout out to our boy Mike the Ref. Uh, Backbreaker video, simulcasting all of this stuff. You can find them over there. Uh, YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker video, twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref, and YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker at Backbreaker underscore gaming. You can check out all the great content from him over there. Cam, I just want to say again, thank you so much for joining me here. I really do appreciate having you join me here and just chat about everything in your life in professional wrestling. 
Oh man, thank you for taking the time. And I, we just scraped the surface here. I'd love to come back again sometime, brother. It's it's always a pleasure seeing you at the events. You and Mel, say hi to Mel for me too, please. And uh, thank you for your support. Thank you for your support. Hundred percent. And and when you're when you see Kamikaze at a show. Pick up the USB drives. There's some great classic wrestling on these. I've been watching this. I love this. There's so much good stuff on these thumb drives. And all the rest of his merch he has there. And any other in, in the show, if he's not there, go check out any of the guys at their merch booth. Because, again, you don't know how much that supports these guys when you hit up their merch booth and pick up a T-shirt, a, a, a sticker, an 8x10, whatever they got. Go give them yeah. support. Again, I know they all really do appreciate it. We do. Thank you so much. So uh, thank you all so very much. Thank you for joining us here on Chop Talk, a special chat with Kamikaze. Have a great night, ladies and gentlemen.